Well, how do penguins communicate with each other? How are they able to find a mate or a chick from miles away just by calling? Wish it had been that easy for me. Allison Bruner visited the Kansas City Zoo where she learned all about this from a penguin researcher, right? I did. Justin, are you ready for some penguin talk? Or is I'm they, ready. They, I need they these flocks of women to start calling. coming. So what, right. uh, what can you teach me all here? Right, here we go. Put out your hands a little bit by your side. <laughs> okay. I need you to look up. Look and up. Now start fluffing your hands. Start fluffing my hands. Flapping okay. Your hands. All this right. means that we're calling a, a friend. You're calling out calling a Calling the females. Yes. I can see yeah, them coming in the all distance, the females Allison. Right now. Well, this is just one of the callings I learned about from penguin researchers over at the Kansas City Zoo. Here's a look at what else I learned today. You may recognize these little guys from March of the Penguins, but students in our area are learning far more than what Hollywood captures. How their different calls are sometimes just from uh, the different colonies. Students from six different school districts gathered at the Kansas City Zoo to present their research on what they learned during their Penguin Calls program. I don't see any more rock hoppers. Maureen Lynch is behind this breakthrough on how penguins communicate. If you've seen much of the penguins, they're in just kind of this large mass of penguins. And they have to be able to find each other, um, and they do that by vocalizations. Maureen tells me penguins communicate sort of like humans, and she uses a voice box to help translate what they're saying. From those recordings, Maureen's learned penguins communicate through different calls. Oh, right now. So sometimes the gentoos will, they'll stand up and they throw their head back and they kind of flap their flippers around. Um, and that's called the ecstatic call and their normal talking voice, I guess. And so sometimes they're just, they feel the need to say their name or <laughs> say something to their neighbor. There are distress calls, there are just, there are mating calls. The students are using Maureen's research to conduct their own findings. That one has the egg. Mating calls are lower. Maureen describes it as a purr. Another call, hissing. This is when penguins are angry. And the students learn penguins all have their own callings. They're distinct between each mother and each child to where one um, species isn't all the same. For Maureen, she hopes her research will teach penguins how to understand one another. And so we're really hoping that we can figure out something about how they communicate in order to form a new colony. So hopefully we won't see a lot of hissing penguins. We want to see happy penguins. Well, reception called penguins lost in translation will get underway tonight from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Hellsberg Penguin Plaza. And also, while I was over at the zoo today, I got to meet this little guy, Fay J. He is a red panda cub. He was born June 17th and stuck pretty close to his mom behind the scenes for the first few months. He's adorable there. Aww. But you can now see this little guy. He is on display. Very He's actually, cute. I'm told he was named after his father. And, and red pandas, they are endangered species. So bringing a new one into the world. Yeah, and the penguin call works, by the way. About 300 women already lined up outside <laughs> oh, the studio. Oh, I see them out so there. They're exactly. trying to storm in, trying to keep them out. So that's an ecstatic call. So now you know <laughs> yes. how to do that. I appreciate the tip. It's working. Thanks, Allison. Well, Kansas City's uh, favorite things. It's about much more.